Juan Massimo and I work here at Charmante Music Works and we uh, rebuild uh, and restore all sort of uh, automatic music instruments from uh, their pianos, reproducing pianos, standard foot pumpers and band organs, uh, reed organs, or anything that really plays a role we can do. And also we make roles for the, those instruments. Well, this is a Steinway XR. Uh, XR is um, basically it gives you the size uh, or the length of the grand piano and the R stays for reproducing, which is, means that it was fitted uh, with a reproducing system, which is called, this is a Eolian Duo Art system. And, uh, and the, the only difference with a, in the piano itself, the only difference with a standard model, which the corresponding model would be an M, Steinway M, is that it's uh, seven inch longer here to accommodate the spool frame. And it's got some more modification in the frame to allow for all the hair poses and the, and the tubing to go through the keyboard and back to the, where all the layer system and the reproducing system is. So this is not, like, this is not your standard normal player piano in the sense that it can actually um, reproduce the dynamics of how the pianists play the piano, so it, it can play notes softer or louder, depending on how these uh, the no the holes and the rolls are arranged. The first four holes and the last four holes and the rolls are kind of controls how loud and soft it plays. Basically, this in this system, the this side, the four holes on this side are uh, to uh, encode how the accompaniment, how loud the accompaniment plays, and also in general how the whole step is kind of like a bass line. And the one on the right are the are the, called the theme uh, theme holes, and that's basically uh, controls how loud the theme plays, which basically the theme is just uh, there's another there's another two holes on the sides here. They basically control how loud the theme notes are played. Um, when, so when the theme all goes through the keyboard, basically triggers triggers like a blast of air to play those notes uh, louder. So basically, it accentuates the theme of the song, while the rest of the of the piano plays softer. So you kind of create an expression that way. And uh, although this, this player stack is divided in by bass and treble, so it's basically playing separately at different levels. It can play separate at different levels, but this theme mechanism can express the same across the keyboard. It doesn't, it's not really divided in half. There's a, a lot of controls. The, this is just the on and off switch. This is like the reroll. Um, this is uh, the tempo, see the changes, and uh, these are basically instead of having, if you play a normal standard piano roll, you can shut off the expression, the duar system, and then you can control it with these levers. You can do the same thing that these poles do with the levers. Which is kind of like, a uh, be one of the differences between these and other reproducing system because uh, like the Ampicor piano doesn't allow you to manually, and that's uh, the selector that basically so it can make it play softer or louder or standard or normal. Yes, uh, this was, was built in 1947. Uh, there are stamps; they stamp the date on the stack. And I mean, the I think it was January 27, 1927. The piano may have been made earlier, but it's about around that time frame. And I, I think Steinway keeps track of the serial, there, there's a serial number, and if you ask them, they will tell you exactly the day, the factory, who made it, like, <laughs> they kept, they keep, they kept, and they still keep track of everything they do. Um, we actually here uh, restore, we rebuild the player part and the producing part, and we didn't uh, rebuild the piano itself, we are subcontracting for a company near Knoxville. So.
so they did uh, all the piano work and the finishing. Well, basically, it's uh, it was already taken apart. So this was a part is a lot more difficult than a usual because uh, we didn't take the piano apart. They somebody else did, and it was on uh, boxes, and it was missing parts. So we had to kind of it was kind of a puzzle to put it back together, but. Uh, basically, we we take everything. Like for example, from what you can see here, kind of gives you an idea. It's uh, this is the air motor. It needs everything needs to take, be taken apart, clean. Uh, there is you have to put new graphite on the sliders. You have to re recover all the all the bad loads with new pneumatic cloths. You have to put new pipe tubing all around. And the spool the spool frame actually doesn't. Is the one that doesn't need much work. Usually, just clean it up, uh, spray, it, refinish it, uh, clean all the brass, and and then the retube it, where you basically replace all the old rubber tubes that go from from the these holes to, all the way down to the to the player stack. They activate the actual striking pneumatics, and. Uh, and the same thing, basically it's all, there's a whole lot of um, uh, pneumatic bad loads that need to be recovered because the pneumatic cloth after 30, 40 years start going hard and it breaks and, and it's not airtight anymore. And there's a lot of valves, like this is a valve block. Basically valves is what converts the signal from the tracker bar to a higher, it's kind of like a relay where it, it sends more air to the device, whatever device is connected to. And those are basically ladder, and it's, they're ladder pallets and, and wood, uh, glued onto wood, and you have to clean or replace all the ladder if it's deteriorated. And same thing with the pouches that are dual, kind of like a big, a little bag that inflates to open and close the valve. And, uh, and those are also made of ladder and sometimes most, I mean, at this point, this is, you know, it's 90 years old and it's 90 years old later, later so you have to kind of pretty much replace everything. And uh, uh, the range, since this is uh, eight, eight of the tracker bar holes are used by the expression system, so he only plays, he doesn't play the full range, he plays 80 notes. And so there's 80 strike in pneumatics that all need to be recovered and 80 valves that all needs to be adjusted. And and in this type of reproducing, yeah, was, uh, getting the valve, you actually have to measure the valve travel for each one of them because if there were differences, then you get where one node will play louder or softer than the other if you are not careful. and then it will influence the the way the expression system works. And while you know on a standard player piano it's a little more medium. How long did it take you to restore this? Well, I mean about six months. -ish. And then it was a long time to when putting it together because it was we had to f make some trial trips back to Knoxville, find from a donor piano, parts that were missing from this one, and so that was a little more complicated. But uh, it's called the Expression Box, and uh, it's, this is obviously on restore, but this is how they come. Sometimes <laughs> they come in, <laughs> and actually this is kind of a scrap one that we used to get hardware from. All the all these brackets and levers sometimes are broken or seized and. It's good to have an extra one to just can cannibalize. And uh, so basically, these are the two regular. They basically these two have a spring here. These two bad loads, and they actually like a shock absorber where they keep the vacuum constant. Because these these pianos will work based on vacuum. And uh, and this goes to the two different sides of the stack. And one is a. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I think the, this one is the accompaniment, and this is the theme. And uh, and basically, on this side that is not here anymore because it fell apart, because the ladder was gone. There's an kind of accordion. It looks like an accordion, and it collapses or or came back uh, depending on how 
these all are open, when one of these all open, one section of the accordion kind of uh, collapses. And so you can you basically, using the combination, you have, uh, you can go from, you have basically an inch total travel, and you can change it at one sixteenth increment. And that basically regulates how much air goes through above in here. And that gives you a much vacuum you end up having in the stack and how loud it plays. And one side, again, does the whole, pretty much the whole accompaniment throughout the, the whole range. And the other one does the theme that plays only when these other holes are open. Yeah. The other big thing you see moving under there is the vacuum pump. This is a big flywheel, flywheel. So as if I were under there and it's playing, you can see that yeah. it's exposed. Very good. It may take a minute. Now, what that would they have done years ago? They wouldn't have put a thing like this under. Oh here. yeah, I'm would they? Exactly yeah, right. it's a reproduction of what exactly what it was. Yeah, it's kind of a little kid counter. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if a uh, little kid crawls under here, he can lose his hands or oh, get mangled up in the flywheel. Also, keep some dust out and like pets, I guess. Yeah. Cats. Cats. Hi. I'm dressing it. <laughs> yes, that's right. There you go. Actually, that looks pretty good. So, yeah. Well, this is the vacuum pump which is driven by this old 1927 model. <laughs> uh, this is the loud pedal. These are the... And what did you I call that again? Is that the expression box? Expression box. As you can probably see better from this side. This tubing comes straight from the tracker bar to here. I got a good view of it, very good. And... Uh, so those are connected to those very critical tubes you were referring yes. to. And uh, and then the, there's a valve and then that amplifies the signal, let's say, and then it sends vacuum to these that are the cordon pneumatics that collapse and pull a lever, basically. And these are the levers that come from those manual overrides, let's call them overrides, that you can control, ma they, they basically act on the same valves and they do the same thing as the automatic expression, but and and then there's some there's some let's say air motor governor over there. That box over there that basically keeps the uh, air motor go at a constant speed independently by how by how much vacuum is there is in the system. So it, you don't change tempo if there's more vacuum. It doesn't speed up or slow down. And this is a, a regulator that kind of that regulates the pressure for the, the vacuum and not the whole system. Touch it, hold, point to it again, please. Sure. Okay. And it's uh, it's got an exhaust air system for when the piano is re-rolling, so it vents out some of the vacuum from the pumps and it prevents it from over stressing the motor. I see. And uh, it also has a couple of pneumatics that change uh, basically that's this is the main thing that happened when you put it on soft or loud I see. when you put it on soft it there's a there's a pallet that closes the valve that makes all the air go through a regulator and kind of softens it, softens it and when it's on loud instead you all the vacuum goes through it is all so clean it's been all refinished and it's beautiful cleaned and all the every single screw has been wire brushed and cleaned and and i suspect it was pretty the, dusty uh, when you first yeah. got it i mean this wasn't too bad especially since they sit underneath they don't get too overly dusty the one thing that is always on every single reproducing piano this era is suit call suit suit what's it called like the call dust from soot. Soot. It, it is one, like the the piano, antique piano shop, which is the piano company we are subcontracting in this project is, uh, they do both, they restore pianos for, to sell, so for selling, and, but also they restore them for 
customers and I think this is belongs to a customer. <laughs> saw in the tracker bar where the, the, the fur, four, first four holes on each side are for the expression but also there are these little snake bite holes they're called snake bites and those basically control the theme uh, when basically they tell the piano when to play which notes play louder than the other ones so it can pick up a theme in the among the whole the notes they're playing and uh, there's one set on the left side and one on the right and one controls the treble and one controls the bass and that's pretty much and it. so that makes it unique and that also makes yes. it a more challenging for you to say to, reproduce yes, music yes because this? you need uh, two different types of punches at the same time and for now we can just only you have, don't have that access no. but we but are, maybe in the future you will yes yes because all it will be to do in that like in the puncher that we already have set up is to add uh, another punch on the side that will only do those and yeah that. these are not really big right now but 10 15 to 25 years ago uh, they were really big items that were going to Japan you know the Japanese were buying the, buying these reproducing pianos up and I, that was our that was my bread and butter for a long time we just did uh, these Stein, uh, Steinways and uh, Duarts and Ampicos and maybe once in a while a wealthy mignon but uh, now they're really sad because some of these uh, reproducing pianos are getting their innards ripped out and replaced with digital that's how bad it's gone actually the chair, CEO of Sony was really into and automated music, you know, because it was just an early form of technology, you know, that he that uh, he was interested in. And so, uh, you know, the rest of the Japanese followed suit. You know, they were really fascinated with this old Western technology. Good to do with the rolls before you play them is to kind of get them all on one side, get all the paper on one side, and you just do it by banging it gently. So you have the tracking system. These are the tracking here. I haven't talked about it. If uh, when if the roll is kind of not rolled up right and it moves the slides, then basically the holes don't match anymore. And so this system basically, uh, if the roll goes towards too much towards one side, it will open this little valve that controls these and it pushes pushes it push the whole spool so that it keep it stays right on track on the on the tracker ball. 
there's some that have a manual track and if you keep the rolls kind of nice then you don't really you need it but a lot of times yes so and you just put the on there Yeah. This this hole right here is the re-roll. So if you don't cover it, once you start the piano, it will automatically go on re-roll.
Boston. 